now on News Talk 105.9 WMAL. O'Connor and Company. 7.36 now on this Monday morning in the nation's capital as we continue to reflect on the events of September 11th. Uh, thank you for joining us here. Coming up later in the program at uh, 8.05, we're going to check in with Rick Prado, a former CIA officer. Uh, talk to him about the events of September 11th and everything in the last 22 years. And then at 8.35, Scott Smith at Dad in Loudoun County. He is back in the news because he got it, and, and for good reasons. He's been pardoned by Governor Glenn Youngkin. So we'll hear right from Scott Smith on that. Larry O'Connor, Julie Gunlock. Good morning. Good morning to you, Julie. And uh, let's get right to it with a recap of yesterday's opening day at FedEx. We were there. It was sold out 64,000 oh. people. And I got to tell you, all burgundy and gold. Yeah. Now, there may have been some cardinal color in there that just blended in, but yeah. boy, you, you didn't hear them. Almost every defensive stand, everyone in the stadium on their feet shouting. I mean, it reminded me, last time I've seen that at FedEx was RG3's rookie year. Yeah. So, so right there with the welcome home slogan of the team on the stadium, it uh, something's happening there. Oh, and by the way, the team won. But did they win well enough? Was it was it a big enough victory? People were expecting more. How'd they look, and what should we expect when we play teams that aren't quite as easy as the Arizona Cardinals? Let's bring in Trevor Maddich, our WMAL Commanders analyst. What do you think, Trevor? Well, Larry, hey, Julie, it's been it's been a long time since there seems like a rebirth over there. Yeah, and that's what it it kind of half felt like with the new ownership with the fans filling the stadium that were actually Commanders fans <laughs> instead of tickets being sold to the other team because they couldn't get tickets at their home stadium, but they knew that they were easy and cheap to get at FedEx Field as a road team. You know, it, it the, the, the feel was great. It was a rebirth of the team, and it was a rebirth of the team if you only watched the defense. Yes. But at least they got the win. Yes. But – but off uh, the offense, there didn't seem to be much new, actually. In fact, it was the same old story. Yeah, it, it was the same old story. I mean, they partied like it was 2019. Hmm. Didn't they? Yeah. It, uh, the, the, the offense, though, shows signs of life. There, there were good things that the offense did. I mean, the, the offense struggled to move the ball at times. They made big mistakes at times. I think people are really talking about the, the quarterback, Sam Howell. Right. And, and how he did. Right, because he he's the future of this team until he's not, and he did some very good things in this game. He also did some things that future opponents will absolutely exploit. They will literally grab Sam Hell by the ankles and just like Bam Bam in the Flintstones, just just swing him to one side or the other, Bam 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 Bam, and hit his head on the ground if he doesn't fix some of those things. But for this opener, the good things that he did are things to build from. Now he has to build from them. So, Trevor, I, I, one thing that I kept hearing from from everyone around me in the game and and certainly what I saw on social media afterwards was he, Sam House got some of the best wide receiver weapons in the NFL. And it took – I mean, there were several plays where he just didn't see them. They were wide open. And, and you would think he's got a good arm, but he did. He, does he just not see them? Is the game going too fast for him? Um, because it was very frustrating. It was like, throw the ball, throw the ball. He's right there. John Dotson's open. Throw the ball. Yeah, it, it seems like he, in this game he had a good arm, bad neck, because he basically <laughs> stared at one receiver, and if he was open, he threw the ball, and it was decisive, and most of the time it looks great, but if that guy wasn't there, then there were problems, and some of that was, was Sam. Some of that was a clock in his head knowing that he didn't have good protection. They sacked him six times. Yeah. And there were goofy sacks, too. I mean, not just a normal sack where a blocker got beat, but, you know, where blockers tripped each other, where, you know, there was just all kinds of goofy stuff going on. And so I kind of think he didn't want to take time in the pocket to scan the field. Hmm. That's one of those things that he'll need to fix next time around because if he just stares at one receiver – Denver next week will jump that receiver, and they'll be pick six, pick six after pick six. But he was decisive and accurate when he decided to throw to that one spot. So he just didn't see a whole lot else. And then and back to the offense again um, in terms of the play call. Was that Ron Rivera's offensive scheme, or was it uh, our, uh, our new offensive no, coordinator? Eric the enemy. The yeah, but was it? because I mean, Or is this what he's going to do when he doesn't have Patrick Mahomes? Because, boy, it sure, it sure was boring. 
uh, well, I think they were they were trying to do no harm. I mean, the 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 Cardinals are the worst team in the league, and they got even worse when they cut some good players um, or allowed them to leave and trade it and stuff like that. Uh, it's almost like the Cardinals were trying to tank to get a good quarterback at the top of next year's draft. I'm not accusing them of that, but so so <laughs> I, I think are, watch Trevor. the first. I mean, you are well, a little bit. And, and Washington was slightly better than them. So, hey, it's a starting point. It's a place to build from. But I, I think the offense, you know, there, there were some boos at one point where yeah. late in the game there was conservative play calling. But at the same time, Washington's offense was not going to win this game no matter what they did. They were only going to lose it hmm. because the defense was going to win the game. And Washington tried to lose it with a sack, fumble, scoop and score by the Cardinals defense. Yeah. Right. Yep. And so that's the kind of thing they were trying to avoid. That's why it looked what some people would say was boring. So uh, the next home game is against the Buffalo Bills and they are not the Phoenix Cardinals. Uh, would you recommend fans come out and see the game? I mean, it's, it's, it's a brand new experience now, Trevor. What are you saying to your friends? Yeah, I, I think fans should come out. They should cheer because Fans now, for the first time in a long time, can be part of helping to win these home games because the team actually is getting better, and the offense, I think, was as bad as it's going to look all year um, in this opener. Okay. Uh, so, I, I, yeah, come out, fans. Come out, scream and yell, because you're, you're part of this turnaround with the new owners. Well, and when the defense was on the field, it sure felt like the fans were a part of it. It, was, it had that 11th, man, uh, 11th player feel going for it. Or twelfth man. Well, the fair they were one, and the thing is that the 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 organization had no right to expect the fans to support them until they started winning big. Yeah. But the fans came out anyway because they, they 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 have stayed with this team in their heart. Yeah. Also, real fast, did you? I know you, Julie. You loved the moment when they showed um, Rigo up in that. You know, a lot of alums. Yeah. yeah. And Trevor, talk to me about the moment they showed Rigo. The crowd screams, and then he opens up his jacket, and his lining is a Redskins and logo. Then the, and then the camera pans away. Yeah, really the fast. camera tightened the shot. <laughs> but boy, that was the biggest uh, ovation of the night seeing yeah. the Redskins uh, logo up there. Yeah. But isn't that isn't that Rigo? I yes. mean, famously, way back in the day, he called Justice. Supreme Court Justice Sandra Day O'Connor, Sandy. Yeah. And so, you know, that, that's our Rigo. We love him for that. He is. He's got cojones wow. that he would bring to the field in a wheelbarrow. <laughs> love that. <laughs> All right, Trevor. Thank you, sir. Thanks, guys. All right. Um, also, Rigo has a great head of hair. Have you noticed yeah, his no Rick, Riggins hair? Not, not a lot of football players have hair like that because they wear the helmet and their right. hair gets pulled out, doesn't grow back. Mm. But a lot of NFL players go take care of their hair loss at PAI Medical Virginia. Smart. In fact.